Hello everyone, welcome back to Kane. We're in the brain room, the green brain room, which is a medical hologram. A swirling mass of neon particles make up an animated anatom anatomically accurate model of a human skull. The effect is probably much more disconcerting than the lab designers intended. Not really that disconcerting. And we have another PDA. The private journal has been knocked to the floor. Now who might have done that? Sharon Kane Musk, January 27. She looks kind of weird. Uh, she might be the daughter of the boss, or maybe she is the boss. I don't know. Okay, uh, probably not with how she starts. Okay, there is a lot of entries. We're going to read them. Hey, yay. Okay, that fucking bitch. I mean, I get it. She's John's daughter. John Maracek. She's a big deal or whatever, but I'm Kane. I'm a Kane, and that spoiled brat needs to know her place. So maybe I'm not her biological mother. Not some nobody gutter whore from the dust colonies. But her father and R and I are lovers now, and she has to accept that and show some respect. I think I'm going to start insisting that she call me mother, just for today's insolence. And I can probably use John's pathetic piety to play the two of them of each other when she inevitably defies me. That should be amusing. Besides, without me, the whole team would be totally screwed because I'm the only one who can go near Samantha. Me, not Julia, not even John. Me. Okay, um, those names. Those could be names from Stasis, but I forgot the names. So I'm very sorry that I don't mention the names if they're truly the names that are in Stasis. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead and read it. She's a very unpleasant person as well, like all the others that own a PDA. February 10. Samantha and I have a mutual understanding, I think. An experiential bond. Me with my disabilities and she with her idiosyncrasies. She knows her big words. Ever since the stroke, people treat me like I'm different. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's why you're looking a little, little bit weird. Like I'm other, so I can empathize with her. She's more than just a product to me. She's a collaborator, a conspirator even. It's not like anybody else knows about our special experiments. The CEO has arrived at the facility. If I hadn't handled some of the paperwork myself, I'd probably have known anyway because John was especially devout about his purification rituals when we met last night. I was still scrubbing blood out of the upholstery this morning. The shit I tolerate for my career prospects. March. Since when I'm accountable to the fucking support staff, that Danny Boland has become a constant, insufferable nuisance, skulking around in my lab and asking too many questions. He's in charge of managing the facility's life support systems, not our research work. I told Samantha about it. She said I should bring her Danny's pet parrot. I think she said that. It's the kind of thing she would say. Note. During the weekly inventory, I noticed that two grubs are missing from the habitat. Julia's sleazy friend from Mind Transfer has been hanging around our department lately, and he's expressed an overly keen interest in our specimens. Did he take them, and for what? Just her number? An email from Sharon Kane Musk to Danny Boland about an accident. Your bird got into Samantha's birthing lab somehow and was killed. It may be some consolation to know that despite such a regrettable tragedy, we've gleaned valuable information about Samantha's behavior in the process. She prefers to prolong the suffering of her prey, for example. This could be useful in our research. Sorry about that. Sharon. June. I think that John and Julia aren't talking to each other. Between the food poisoning epidemic, a frustrating lack of real progress in our department's work, and her consistent refusal to properly acknowledge me as a part of the family, I guess everything is a bit volatile at the moment. Samantha thinks, thinks it's hilarious, but I'm questioning my own precarious position in the middle of things now. John is locking himself up in his office and sulking all day isn't exactly helping me. And Julia's sullen disregard is now turning into blatant hostility, not fucking constructive, Sharon. She's talking to herself. Alright, five more. Samantha has been sort of subdued for the last week or so. She won't tell me what the problem is, but I think it might be something to do with the temperature in the labs. Danny Boland is enforcing new atmosphere maintenance regulations, ostensibly to eliminate thermal fluctuations in food storage as a possible reason for the ration spoiling. But I suspect it's petty revenge for the parrot incident. With the temperature now kept below the habitat's usual 95 degrees, however, Samantha's grubs are drowsy and morose. July 1. 
I visited the atmospheric control room today to see if I could adjust the temperature in our labs and I made the most intriguing discovery. Somebody has been collecting body parts and making some sort of thing. An organic simulacrum maybe. I must assume this is some secret, obviously desperate new research development in Dr. Adams' department. I think that's the thing we've seen. So I've told John and Julia about it. Tensions have now been temporarily forgotten as our team redoubles its own efforts to resolve the problems of advanced organ regrowth. Samantha has become increasingly unco uncooperative though. I think she liked it when everybody was preoccupied with circumstantial drama and not her. September 19. My personal stem cell therapy project has had some unanticipated results. I developed what appears to be a cluster of sphincter-like gland ducts around my lower abdomen, groin and upper thighs, somewhat resembling those found in the more mature grub specimens. It emits some sort of musky jellyous discharge, perhaps a pheromone. Did I mix up my glial regeneration sequences or were the samples contaminated? It doesn't matter now. John's become obsessed with them. I suppose the flagellation thing should have clued me into his predilection for kinky sex stuff, but this is a whole other level. I won't lie though, it's kind of hot. Clinical improvement on my mobility and speech issues is limited, however, so that's a bust shit. Yeah. December 19. We've been in lockdown for a week and only briefly released a day for an emergency drill. Something is going on around here, but nobody's talking about it. First the food poisoning, then the fungus infestation, and now what? I'm down to my last pack of cigarettes. I shouldn't have taken this fucking assignment. I'm not even directly related to Kane, only through marriage. And my second cousin's at that. But here I am, stuck in this crumbling science museum, sleeping with a decrepit zealot pervert and trying to mend my troubled relationship with the creature from the Black Lagoon because it's the only really meaningful thing I have in here. What have, what have I become? Or, uh, she's mentioning things I don't really am aware of yet, but that's probably... She's probably creating the awareness right now. Another email from Julia Kern. Project update. We need to discuss the situation with Samantha. It's important. Meet me in the birthing lab next is in 15 minutes. Aha! The unlock code is something we're going to take a picture of. Alright. Let's do this. I have it captured. And now we can unlock another room. Yay! But not uh, be uh, before we're done with this one. Worn wooden desk, coffee stains, and, and a random assortment of inscrutable and insignificant academic junk clutter. The antique walnut top. Uh, what else? It's the same thing. Bloated brain floating in vat. Awesome. Lumps of tissue have started to separate from the frontal and occipital lobes. And scrum like bloodless tentacles in the preservation fluid. And a brain nutrient tank. The stuff of science fiction body horror turned into terrifying reality. I don't know, this whole isometric view, the setting and the graphics and the whole um, brain vats or nutrient tanks, those remind me of Final Fantasy VII. The first time you've met Sephiroth in that very foreboding place. If you played that game, uh, you probably know what I'm talking about. Awesome game. Um, I'm not really digging the remake because I don't really like Square Enix anymore, but that's another topic altogether. All right. Detached brain, viscous preservation fluid bubbles around the disembodied brain, a faint rotting smell permeates the immediate air, and another tank, perfusion of oxygenated blood substitute and artificial cerebrospinal fluid into the preservation fluid can keep the samples viable for months, even years at a time. Now you know. All right, that's something we can interact with. Thrumming machinery, barely perceptible, low-level vibrations rumble through the scanner at irregular intervals. And I'm clicking on that just to click. Because you never know. Bloodstained bed, the cloying stench of putrefaction hangs like a pell over the plastic pallet. That's awesome. Anything else? Flooding? Flooding? What did I read there? Floor flooring. A mold has invaded the floor tiles. That can be healthy. Okay, and here we have our personal data tag printer. The inside of the tube is encrusted with ice, perhaps as a result of cryogenic freezing. A low hum radiates from this brain nutrient tank. 
Let's have a closer look then. And a puzzle. PDT. This must be how they're making the security tags. There must be an easier way. <laughs> this facility seems to do things the hard way. I've heard of spinal tagging on animals, right into the nervous system. Maybe this is like an upgrade. These aren't animals. Sure we are. We're just meat puppets. Meat puppets? You had an interesting childhood. Hi, friend. I'm Ralph. Let's pray in the PDT together. Really? Ralph? He sounds very enthusiastic about it. Alright, so this is where we print the personal data tag. Which will give us access to all kinds of places. So uh, let's get to work here. Blank PDT, PDT template, cryo regulator. If we got that, we can print it. Uh, however, uh, not sure what we can do here. I can't click on these things, I think. Not sure why that is. Maybe it needs power or something. Cannot print, cannot click on these. No, I, I do think that we can't do anything right here, right now. So, uh, we might have stuff to use it on. Hadley needs to get her head checked. We have data records. If I could only... Nope. You want a blade? Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Okay, so I assume we can't do anything with it yet. But yeah, my assumptions have been very off uh, in the previous parts. So, um... Who knows? At least we have a code. So we can make some progression. And shit, there is this code on the Tim crate. We do have to run back all the way to the console again. Um, yeah, those numbers on that crate. I wonder if we'll get to use them. Maybe it's just like a decoy. I'm thinking about another game that I played in September. Abduction uh, from the creators of Myst. That game had really nasty puzzles as well. And there was a, one puzzle... Um, that served as a decoy. Uh, you thought that you needed to use it or needed to solve it, but it didn't do have, didn't do anything. Uh, so it was there to troll us. Uh, anyway, what are we unlocking? Not that. It needs four. I think we're unlocking. Not that. We're on. No shit. Okay. What were you? Okay. Now I'm confused. Because we have four four symbols, right? Let's check that out. Yeah, there are definitely four symbols. Shit. Oh, you idiot. I'm being such an idiot. This is the input, <laughs> this is the some symbols we can choose. Oh, damn. All right, but now I don't know where to use them. Was it birthing lab? Brain? I don't really know, but let's um, try it out. It isn't on my screenshot, so I don't know. Anyway, it's a plus, it's a lightning bolt and two flags. But it's probably the wrong one. So let's check one of the others. Um, Is there anything else you can make out around you? No. Deep thumping noise. Like a machine. Another generator, maybe? Focus on the last thing you do remember. I... I can't. There are... Uh, there are flashes. A, a hospital. Family. They... Well... They didn't like me much. <laughs> Join the club. I wanted, wanted what I have. Oh, what 
What's that? Money. My name. Then they arrest me. Or I push them away. Why? They weren't good enough. They weren't willing to put in the hard work. Wanted to be given things. Given. The things that I bled over. Well, I don't talk to Mother anymore. And my dad... Well, no clue who he is. She was distant. Maybe she was always like that. Maybe I was just unlikable. She sure made it clear, often enough, that I was too much like him. But she saw too much of him in me. I'm sorry, Hadley. Sometimes we unintentionally hurt the ones we love. Such greeting card bullshit. You don't hurt the people you love, you love the people you love. Okay. She's a little bit angry with the uh, the man. Now, is that man who is talking perhaps maybe Mr. Kane? Um, because he was referring to his family and they wanted his money and his name. So who knows. Anyway, this thing is open. It was the birthing lab, Nexus. So, in we go. And I'm pretty proud of myself because 16 minutes now and I'm not stuck in those 16 minutes. So let's keep it up. Um, security hologram. The area beyond this door must be important to warn in such security. Stained floor. Old plasma and unrecognizable stains have formed an interesting patina on a metal floor. This is where we can go. Um, this is where we can go. So there's actually two ways we can go. And we'll go here first. Okay, what are we seeing here? Bugs dying in a pool of gooey slime. A picture of a baby and a temperature all in red. There are some blood stains and I don't know. The glass is damaged. And well, let's have a look. Atmosphere readout. This display primitively summarizes the current temperature humidity, toxicity, and other status levels of the specimen habitat. Okay, those readings are not healthy. Sample retrieval node is a pneumatic delivery tube for moving samples safely between the observation laboratory and the specimen habitat. Grubs. The specimens in habitat are inert and unresponsive, perhaps in some sort of induced coma. Oh, these are the grubs. Biological growth. A greenish gaseous smog lingers around the composite mass of flesh, muscle fiber, bone and other organic matter. What is the matter with this place? Glass barrier. The optically transparent polymer forms a particularly resistant barrier to the grub habitat. Alright, what else? Another terminal. This terminal shows diagnostic information about the specimens, including growth charts, medical reports, and the feeding schedule. And we also have a retrieving platform. Crusted smudges of brown ichor stain the specimen tray. And I think that's it for now. So let's start with the terminal. <coughs> Grob habitat. Julia Kern logged in, check in, Caligula, Attila, Mengili, Genghis, Mao, Nero and Vlad. Those are the names of the grubs, I assume. Incidents. Vlad was temporarily removed from the habitat using a baited containment canister. Caligula has exhibited extreme aggression towards her siblings. Mao consumed five appendages from Nero. I have supplied raw meat and plasma to encourage brood gas production. Vlad produced an excess of the nootropic vapor which resulted in low visibility in habitat. One cubic meter of gas was shipped to the Kern lab for the subjugation of Samantha. Vlad was returned to the habitat. Observation 1. Attila has started the metamorphosic, metamorphic process. I've applied a metabolism inhibitor in order to inhibit stage 2 maturation. 
What are those things for? Oh, don't tell me they have been put into the women and that we have a grub inside ourselves as well. The developers are crazy enough to do it. Observation 2. The grubs are responding negatively to maternal vocal calls. There is a possible rupture in the grub containment enclosure that is causing a brute gas leak that is in turn agitating Samantha. Habitat humidity reduced from 84RH for the 5-12 hour hibernation cycle. Personnel... Pers ah, there we go, another code. I'm making a note of the crew facilities password in case Boland locks me out again. So... There we go. Got a picture of that thing. And uh, now let's uh, see what this thing contains for us. God, it must smell terrible in there. Yeah, just thinking about it. Uh, bait canister, huh? Do we have something that resembles bait canister? Like a blade? Grasping at straws, <laughs> That's what I do. Nothing is too crazy. I don't think it works that way. Not sure that's how it works. Okay, I'm pretty sure uh, we cannot proceed. At least we have another code. So uh, we're opening something else. Oh yeah, and there's still the other way. In this room, so let's see. This game is really bigger than I thought. Which is a pleasant surprise. Jesus. You're scared. <laughs> Heck yeah, I'm scared. This place. I hate this. Monsters. He might be talking to himself. Okay, every room becomes creepier. Always with the blood and gore. Burning machinery, acrid black smoke loops between the melted circuitry and plastic. Restraining harness, tattered thermonolon, thermonolon, strapping and mangled clamps dangle ominously from the massive reinforced steel frame. Whip. A strip of leather sways gently. All right, we can interact with it. Oh, this is the whip. Purple whip. Another PDA. Broken lever mechanism. The lever seems to have been violently snapped off at the base and disposed of. Hydraulic mechanism. It looks like it's attached to something submerged in that stuff. Organic fluids. It smells like an abattoir. So we can flip the switch. There's a voice recorder. An authoritative voice broadcasts from the tiny recording device. And there's a floating corpse. Lacerated ribbons of flesh and muscle tissue frame the shattered vertebrae like some grotesque work of art. A mangled PDT clings to the spinal cord. Oh, we might need that PDT. Now we can grab it. Okay, so there's a broken lever mechanism and a lever. The control box is connected to a hydraulic mechanism in the vat. Hydraulic mechanism in the vat. This thing, yeah. Anything else? All right, then um, let's start with the PDA. A personal diary lies idle. So some reading time. John Kern. Oh, it's not John Marachek. It's a different John. Someone. Holy shit, that's a lot. That's a lot. No. Cloning is unpredictable. Cloning an individual is, is impossible. It sounds like they were using something special. Something called Samantha. All right, so I'm pretty sure there's no connection with the names with Stasis. So I think we can safely rule that out. Anyway, reading time. Um, today's a holy day. Henry Kane himself has arrived frozen and waiting for the great harvest to come. Soon the flesh of the immortal vessel will bring him new life. 
We're closer than ever, and I know it. The race has begun, and I will not allow Dr. Adams, the heretic he is, to win. No, Cain will not allow it. He knows his plan, and he knows that it ends with me. Our Leviathan is Samantha. Nothing on earth is her equal. A creature without fear. The book of Job. That's from the Bible. February 14. Never again will he die. Never again will he feel pain. Never again will he leave us. He will be reborn of his own duplicate flesh and not that of Adams and his ridiculous mind transfer parlor trick. At least his uh, entries are short. We are getting closer. Our next patient has undergone a new and improved genetic fusion procedure and is reacting well. The spinal cord has been killed, meaning that the dead cells will need to regenerate and reform into a functioning spine. No signs of physical rejection thus far, and cellular regeneration is slowly beginning. It should reconstruct itself overnight. Our Lord has stricken us with inadequacy. We have failed yet again. This is my fault, and I must as always accept responsibility. This time I've added hooks to my whip, and I shall flagellate until dawn. I will elaborate on the results after I've taken time to reflect. He's a man of God, and he likes to self-induce pain. Fusing Samantha's DNA with the patient's caused the newly regenerated spinal cord to expand drastically, forcing the vertebrae to audibly pop into even halves. Soon after, the patient's immune system attacked the rogue spinal cells, which in turn retaliated by killing off all other attached nerves. In the end, the patient succumbed to asphyxiation as the new cells burned through oxygenated blood more quickly than the lungs could produce it. Another failure, but still not a wasted body. Awful. Praise be, I've spent the day, or at least most of it, reflecting on our Savior's brilliant plan. The pieces slide into place. Samantha, myself, and the Almighty Cain in the same facility. The planets are aligning. The end draws near, or perhaps the beginning. May 13. I'm glad we have finally found a use for Ralph. We have put him to a more productive task. Ha! His blasphemous lectures about how the fungal plague is a result of poor hygiene were getting on my nerves. It is Cain's doing. The plague is his retribution for our sins. Tonight we test again. We'll be using the same procedure as before, but this time an enzyme inhibitor will be introduced to prevent excess tissue generation. We must not accept failure. We will bask in the light of Cain's restored glory. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be heard of the second death. Revelation. I'm not really too well versed in um, Bible language, but a little bit, I guess. June 8. Still the patient lives. However, it has exhibited some concerning symptoms. Although the spinal cord has stopped regenerating at an appropriate time, the arms and legs will occasionally twitch or more accurately flail. It seems that the spine has control over the connected limbs. The patient is no longer viable. After a promising start, regenerative tissue again expanded beyond intention. Surprisingly, the patient's removed vocal cords were reconstructed. Of course, it did not understand speech. It must have been frightened by its own inhuman screaming as it immediately tore its own throat out. Great. After some gurgling, it regenerated within hours. Then terrible screaming and bloody extraction. A cascade of rotting tissue. The previous throats began to form a dangling, bleeding scarf. All right, I'm... I'm very visual that way, so I'm seeing something very, very nasty before me. As the patient continued to tear itself apart. Who is the writer of this game? He has a sick mind. Oh, that abomination. As far as Sharon can tell, Adam's unrighteous creation has wasted precious flesh in making a toy of some kind. Just like its creator, the abomination has been an unholy waste of resources. Even a name such as Hobo is an undeserved grace. It is an animal and nothing more. Almost there, almost there. Pestilence strikes. The fungal threat is weak now, but soon it will spread to our flood, food, and to our bodies. If it hasn't already, this is our first and perhaps final warning to make haste. I've traced the spores to a cargo shipment earlier in the year, but I have no idea how they become so virulent, virulent. Behold, with the great plague will Cain smite thy people and thy children and all thy goods. Chronicles. The fungus is having an observable impact on the cellular regeneration process. One patient began 
to develop a film of what resembled reptilian scales, complete with a secondary set of eyelids. This is unacceptable. The spinal regeneration process has been mastered. Almost any tissue can now be perfectly reconstructed, but it's impossible to get definitive results with the interference. Cain, if you truly seek rebirth, why do you hinder me so? Is this not the time? Surely there is a reason. Samantha scratched several demonic scrawls into an insignificant employee's back. I warned them not to get close to the succubus. She is the devil. Sometimes we need to make a deal with hell to get closer to heaven. Forgive me, Kane. I succumbed to Sharon's temptation and had a romantic dinner, rather than working late as I should have done. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Timothy, my repetitive failure has indeed had an impact on my faith, and I am being tested. For the love of Cain, I shall rise above. He is turning crazy. Today I noticed that my laboratory is missing several incubators. The last inventory check was several months ago, so it could have gone missing at any time. This is undoubtedly the work of Adams, but why? He doesn't need the equipment, and I can certainly spare it. Perhaps the hobo is involved. It is disconcerting at best. Last one, December 15. Time is of the essence. Samantha's escape today is likely to be the first of many. And we will eventually run out of ways to subdue her. The re-engineered grubs are producing a potent gas that is driving the bees to fluster. Maybe Samantha is the, that's, that very... Um, um, what I'm... Ugh. What is the word I'm looking for here? Scary. <laughs> Scary creature we saw in the cutscene. The last cutscene. Whether she kills us all or we'll find a way to kill her first, neither outcome revives Cain. I will not rest until he has returned to intervene. From this point forward, I live for nothing else. And then he died? John? He might be still alive. All right, let's uh, interact with the other stuff. Starting with the whip, probably? Yeah. 